Good evening, everybody. I'm Sir Ronan, and I'm delighted to say welcome to the Graham Norton Show. <laughs> show for you tonight. So many great guests. I tell you, my sofa cushions are going to get crushed like Theresa May's hopes and dreams. <laughs> yeah, there she is. <laughs> on Tuesday night, at the moment she lost the Commons vote on a Brexit deal. Maybe if I close my eyes, it'll all go away. <laughs> she lost by 230 votes. It's been described as the biggest humiliation a Tory leader has ever suffered. Yeah, remember David Cameron stuck his cock in a dead pig? Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> you can't be sure. But uh, here's how crazy everything is. You know, the next day, Jeremy Corbyn, he holds the vote of no confidence, and still, Theresa May won. Poor old Jezza. I mean, look at him. <laughs> oh, just an other old man who can't get an election. What do the Europeans think? Because uh, let's not forget, we still have MPPs in the European Parliament. And on Wednesday, there was a great picture of Nigel Farage, still there, still banging on about the British lion roaring. The reaction for the MEP behind him says it all. <laughs> 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 let's get some guests on! <laughs> Later on, we'll have music from Brick Shaw Toppers from 1975. <laughs> This man is one of our finest comedy actors who's been making his laugh for over two decades with the likes of Adrian Mole, Green Wing, and episodes. It is Mr. Stephen Mangan! Yes. Hey. Woo. Hello, sir. Oh, very well, you're very well. Sit down, down. She's the Emmy and Golden Globe winning star of hits like Tales of the City, The Truman Show, Ozark, and Love Actually. Now she's returning to the West End stage. Please welcome, for the first time, Laura Linney! <laughs> Yay! Oh. <laughs> Laura Linney, everybody! Hello. This Oscar nominated actor has starred in films like Hostiles, Lady Bird, and Call Me By Your Name. Now he brings us the critically acclaimed beautiful boy. It's another first time. Welcome to Timothy Chalamet! And this triple Oscar nominee has given us stand-up performances in Atonement, Brooklyn, Lady Bird, and now she's taking on the role of Mary, Queen of Scots. Always a pleasure to welcome Sir Sharonan! <laughs> Lovely to see. Yes, hugs all round. Yeah. Show business. Why not? Uh, so, welcome to all of you. Lovely to see you all. Thank you. Uh, now, sometimes I have to introduce the guests, but uh, Saoirse and Timothy, now you know each other. Yeah, we're best friends. Yes. <laughs> well, you might. Are you? I don't know. We're as close as we could be. <laughs> okay. No, you met on was it Lady Bird. You met on, or did you know each other before that? Uh, yeah, we met. We, we met, met on, on Lady, Lady Bird. Bird. Yep. And we've kind of just been together ever since, because we ended up doing press together after that. And what's the story with you calling Timothy Pony? That's not a thing, <laughs> is it? You said it was a thing. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, what happened was we were doing an interview when Timmy was doing stuff for Call Me By Your Name and I was doing stuff for Lady Bird. And we did an interview and I, I said in the interview that Timmy is, Timmy is like a, he's like a horse. He'll just come up to you and he'll just sort of <laughs> Nuzzle you just randomly, <laughs> and and I think of him as a as a boy horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, <laughs> he's like so, a pony. Yeah. So it's not a thing. But I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> hey, pony. That's weird. Yeah. No, you'd never do that. That's really creepy. Yeah. And uh, and Laura Linney, welcome for the first time. Another three-time Oscar nominee. Well, yeah. 
We must have these two guys, like these young actors, straight out of you know the blocks. There they are on the Oscars. It must be, you must they, they don't it's, know they're being born. You know, it's a, it's a wild thing. And, and when your life intersects with people who you admire or whose work has inspired mm. you, or it's a wild thing to happen mm. that all of a sudden there you are and you sort of can't believe your luck. You can't believe it's happened. You. It's a, it's a really it's a really wonderful thing. Because when you came out of Juilliard, you must have kind of thought, right, this is it. My life begins now. But you you don't go straight into Oscar-winning films. Uh, you hit Commercial Street. Well, I really just thought I would be a theater actress. Um, cameras terrify me. They always did. So, I had an agent who said, just just go to a commercial. Just try and we'll send you up for a commercial just to see how just to get used to being in front of a camera. So I went to this audition for a. Chicken sauce. <laughs> it was a chicken sauce. Lovely. Where there was a very crabby, very irritable, casting director. not happy casting director. <laughs> who started, then they picked four of us to go in. It was me, a much older woman, a man in a business suit, because he came dressed thinking he was going to do some sort of thing with a business suit, <laughs> and me and, and some young kid. And they brought us in, and <laughs> she was like, all right, I'm going to put on some music. And you're gonna dance around like a chicken. <laughs> but don't move your head. Only wings and legs. <laughs> and she would turn on this music, and and I don't what spirit came into me that made me feel like I had to dance around the room like a chicken. But I danced around the room like a chicken. And now we have Lenny's chicken. And sauce. now we have. <laughs> but anytime anyone would do any sort of, which is what one does yeah, when one thinks of chicken. Come on, you're a trained yeah. actress. We'd get yelled at. No heads! <laughs> Don't move! It was the only time the casting director, like, you heard anything other than this from the cast. Don't move your head! <laughs> so it was just it was thoroughly traumatizing. That was it. That was it for me. You may not know, no, but thanks. why couldn't you move your head? I have no idea. <laughs> Makes no sense. Did she have a situation with a chicken? I'm sure she must. Where a chicken maybe <laughs> it, it, something. Left her no, but it was very. She was she, it's screaming. It was the strangest. Wow. Did you get it? One of those. No. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I moved my head. <laughs> Who yes, it? yes. Who the legs excellent. Yeah. But she moved her head. Uh, uh, Stephen Mangan. I think it was in school you were auditioning. School play. You get the role. Yeah. And you come back to your presumably very proud parents. Oh, I was very excited. My first lead part. Hmm. Nine years old. Came home. I got the lead part. Dad was like, great. I was like, I know. He said, what's the play? I said, it's Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> he said, you're playing the Beast. I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, you may think Stephen Mangan's making that up. <laughs> uh, but no, we have photographic you... evidence. Oh this, how old are you in this? Nine, I think. This is Stephen Mangan, age nine, playing Beauty. <laughs> Good. It looks like I'm breaking those teeth in for somebody else. <laughs> Is that your own hair? My own hair, and I can still fit into that dress. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, our first film tonight stars Saoirse Ronan as Mary Queen of Scots. It opens tonight, and uh, on Monday, very glad you were up in Edinburgh. It was Edinburgh Castle. Edinburgh Castle, yeah. For the premiere, and oh, Nicola was out. She was. She was, she was there, she in is. Her glory, look at her. Now, she what looks like she's having a slightly better time than you and the drummer, to be honest. <laughs> she's That's the loving worst it. photograph of me. <laughs> well, you just... What are you looking at? I'm lo I think I'm looking at the drums and the eggs. There was a lot going on. They gave us eggs to shake like maracas. <laughs> and I've never felt more out of tune with a piece of music. <laughs> but she was so into it. She was amazing. And just, like, going up to people and going, hey, how's it going? I'm Nicola. Like, like it was no big deal. Um, and she really got into it. She did the catering as well. She's got some marshmallows on sticks there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you look yeah. thrilled. I was so. starving. <laughs> I was absolutely starving. Yeah. Uh, now, listen, the premise of the film, I mean, so we, we kind of know what happens in the end. Um, Spoiler. <laughs> yeah. She dies. <laughs> There's not Mary Queen of Scots 2. No. I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, it, but it pits you against Elizabeth I, played by mm. Margot Robbie. And I didn't know any of this, but in life, they never met. But obviously, no. but in the movie, there is a, a, a meeting. There's a meeting, yeah. We um, just sort of took the old artistic license <laughs> and uh, lied about what happened. <laughs> um, no, we just, we just... You know, you follow these two characters the whole way through the film and hopefully 
uh, grow to, to sort of love them or at least care about them and you're quite attached to their story and it just felt dramatically like it was the right thing for them to finally meet. So um, yeah, so Margo and I just have this one scene together and we decided to stay apart throughout rehearsals and the shoot. So I didn't know what she was gonna look like as Elizabeth and she didn't know what I looked like as Mary. And so when we finally saw each other, we both just kind of went, oh my God, and it got like very, very emotional because we had been kept apart for so long. So. so this film obviously has you, it has Margot Robbie, but it also has a celebrity horse in it, Prince. Now, what would we have seen Prince <laughs> in? I think we've got a picture of Prince there. Yeah. There he is. Um, he was Wonder Woman's horse. So That's he's where gals. I've seen him, yes. Yeah, yeah you, do you recognise Yes! Oh, yes! Yeah. He's so annoying. I, was, I know that horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Such an ego. And he just, and he just wouldn't... He wouldn't do... And I picked him, so it's my own fault. It's just cos he's so good-looking. He's such a good-looking horse. Beautiful. And he knows and it. He, and, and he knows it. He knows it. He really knows it. <laughs> and he just wouldn't do anything for me. And so every time <laughs> I was on him, I was, like, having to act quite queenly and regal. And I'd be like, OK, onward. <laughs> and Prince just wouldn't move. And everyone around me would be, like, you know, trotting away. And he'd just stand there and I'd be like... Onwards, Prince, and he just wouldn't move. <laughs> and then and then about halfway through the shoot, I realised that when they would call rolling before we would do the take, he would get really nervous. Mm. And he'd do have you been there? Yeah, you're you're like, mm, yeah. yeah. Um, and, he, <laughs> and he had like a nervous cough that he would do. So they'd say rolling and I'd just hear <clears throat> And it was from the horse, and I was like, OK, I know, I know his Achilles heel now. That's amazing that he knew. Yeah, yeah, he knew what was happening. So I could manipulate the situation to work in my favour. OK, well, we've got a clip. This is you talking to the ambassador from the English court, right. played by Adrian Lester. Yeah. Do you think it might stand with my honour to marry my sister's subject? It is true that an earl is not a prince. Surely there can be no greater honour than to match yourself with a nobleman by whom you inherit such a kingdom as England. I have such inheritance by blood, regardless of who I marry or do not marry. <laughs> we must discuss succession before marriage, not the other way around. We hope we do not vex the Earl. Not in the least, madam. I appreciate your honesty. We see why our cousin is so fond of the Earl. I shall respect Elizabeth's crown as soon as she names me its successor. Uh, madam, my if queen. If she has any not... concerns about this proposal, she may express them to me directly. That Scottish accent is really good. <laughs> but is it, was it easy for you to do the Scottish accent being Irish? It was and it wasn't. It was easy because the way the Scots speak is quite similar to us. So I was basically just doing that and I could speak in the same way. But then it also meant that you would just slip into your own accent every now and again. Um, or I'd sound like Northern Irish or something <laughs> and they'd have to pull me out of that. Yeah. Sometimes so, I'd sound that way even when I was speaking in French, which was weird. You <laughs> did, did, that did you have to learn French for this? Yeah. Oh. Fluent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is, though. You are, and actually, actually, I meant to say Timothy. Mm -hmm. It's pronounced Timothy. It's whatever you'd like. Because <laughs> yeah. I always thought, I don't know if you guys, I thought it was Timothée because of the double E's at it, the end. It's supposed to be, but, it, but it, you, it, you could say Doug, Alex, Rick, <laughs> whatever works. I like guests like this. <laughs> Doug Remembering names is Doug half Chalamet. my job. Well, Doug Chalamet, Doug back Chalamet. in the building. <laughs> Does not work as well. <laughs> Doug. Um, but you are fluent in the French. Yeah, uh, yes. I'm, let's say 97%. I always like, you know, give myself a little stopgap because it's not perfect. Oh, okay. oh, no, it's not perfect, no, everyone. No, no, no. <laughs> um, but on set, you also spoke Irish, didn't you? Yeah, so I'm not fluent in Irish, but I know little words here and there. And Eileen, who's my best mate, she's in the film as well. She's the one in that clip who goes and does a little <laughs> cheeky grin to Adrian. And so we, whenever we were like, <laughs> whenever we were talking about someone, basically, I would use Irish words. So I wouldn't, I'd be like, so-and-so is driving me and then use an yeah. Irish word. <laughs> and then one of the sound guys came up to us one day, us thinking that we had gotten away with it, and he was like, um, lads, you know that I am Irish and I do understand everything Ooh. that you're saying. Ooh. And I've got my cans on. We weren't talking about him. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, we thought we'd gotten away with it and we hadn't. 
Because if you imagine, do you speak Irish? You know some Irish. My parents spoke Irish uh, mm. and used to insult me in Irish. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. I know. I know. I know what mangan means in Irish. I don't. I don't. It means luxurious growth of hair. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Mingo. I've got a mane on. It's appropriate. Oh, it is. Yeah, it is. Stephen yeah. Harry is my yeah. name, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> I read that in a key ring in Dublin Airport, yeah. so it's got to be true. <laughs> it's it got to be true. But didn't you go back to meet the Mangans? I mean, I'm there every summer, and, uh, you know, the West Coast, and uh, both... I mean, there are a lot, obviously a lot of Mangans, but my grandmother was Bridget Mangan before she married my grandfather. <laughs> There's nothing dodgy going on. <laughs> she was from a village at least two miles away. So <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, the, the graveyard where they're buried, I mean, I think 60% of the people in there are Mangans. It's just so Mangan, she, Mangan, Mangan, Mangan. I'm like, all right, I'm going to die, I get it. <laughs> was she Bridget Mangan, Mangan? She was Bridget... She didn't double-barrel, no. She, she didn't do Bridget Mangan, Mangan? <laughs> where are Linny's from? I've Don't never Mangan. met a Linny before. Well, Linny is English. Oh. Actually, my... I, I, they all died out. They all died. <laughs> no, they're not. They're actually around, actually, but it's uh, Welsh and... and uh, and English. Oh. But family goes way back to the, to the States. I've, family's been there for a long time. Mayflower. Yeah, that could... Not quite, but... <laughs> <laughs> Close as damn it. Hey, now, Laura Linney, you're uh, in town because you're returning to the London stage in your acclaimed one-woman play, My Name is Lucy Barton. It's at the Bridge Theatre from the 23rd of January to the 16th of February. But this is a return. It's already had a big sold-out run. I've done it once. And, and yeah. now you're back. Uh, directed by Richard Eyre. So, I suppose mm. the, the question is, who is Lucy Barton? Uh, what is her story? So it's a one-woman show, and it is about a woman who uh, has her appendix taken out, and she, there are complications, and she has this terrible fever, and nobody knows why, and she wakes up one morning, and her estranged mother has come to be with her. And it's about that, basically. Now, I've, I've seen the, uh, the play I, on oh. my own volition. I didn't know you were going to be a guest. And it's... I mean, it is an, an extraordinary feet to hold the stage by yourself. It's it... terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it's a oh, God! Oh, my God! It's the most unnatural thing in the world to do. Have you ever done a one-person play before? No! <laughs> is it lonely? I mean, no. is it as lonely? Is it... I mean, it must be a bit Ms. backstage. Well, it's just very strange. It's so odd. I, I'm... Did you buy yourself a present on opening night? <laughs> no, I <laughs> should But, you know, before, the, before I go on, it's just me and the stage manager and... Is there an understudy? I, no, it's just me, and it, it is. What happens um, if you can't do it? One uh, God only knows. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> but it's, it, you know, it's just very bizarre. Before you go out, I get very, very, very nervous, and then you literally sort of have to throw yourself out there, mm. and then it happens, and then I come back off, and I am like, what just happened? Oh my God. What? I just have, and there's no one to turn to and be like, that was really bad, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> like, did I miss that moment or what's going on? So it's a strange. I'm so happy I've been able to do it, and I. love love it because the material is so beautiful. Well, you must have it because you've come back to do it again. Yeah, I really yeah. do. I really love it. And presumably now you're in London, does the Love Actually reaction get bigger in London? No. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> weirdly no. It's, it's sort of... It, love Actually is so much bigger than I ever thought it would ever be, or any of us did, that it, it's sort of a universal sort of connection that people have with that movie. Well, it's turned into a kind of an annual Christmas movie. Mm. People watch Love Actually yeah. at Christmas, don't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but people feel sorry for you. They feel very sorry for me, <laughs> but they shouldn't. They shouldn't, because I really believe I got the best kiss in that movie. Hands mm. down. Yeah. Hands <laughs> down, I got the best kiss. Sorry. Who's that with, with Hugh Grant? Rodrigo oh, Santoro. Oh, oh. oh, yeah? Yeah, oh, I mean, come oh, on. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Mm. Whooping. Mm. Oh, whooping for him, yeah. <laughs> wee hey, wee hey. And it was sweet because we were both very brokenhearted when we made that movie. He had just been dumped, I had just been dumped. No. And we, I remember the, the day we were going to go shoot this and we both sort of slumped in the van. <laughs> and he was like, Laura, my eyes are broken. I was like, so is mine. <laughs> and we went and, and it turned him, I was like, well, all day long we get to make each other feel better. And I think there is a sweetness to the scene because of that. We were both, we were both very sad. Uh -huh. <laughs> sweet, sweet. We must all watch it again yeah. now. <laughs> Because I'm such a huge fan of your That's work. I love everything so you do. Kind. But, um, uh, but I think, like a lot of people, I first encountered you in Tales of the City, mm -hmm. Mary Ann Singleton. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. mm. that was a, I mean, it's a long time ago. It was. I was a said, very I, long time ago. I was really surprised. Yes. How long ago it was. Yes. It was uh, this is 25 years. Wow. So, and, yes. and it's back. It is back. We've start, we're doing a continuation of the series, so it leaps over 
it jumps ahead 25 years, and we just finished filming for Netflix, and uh, so that will be out soon. Wow. And uh, talking of Tales of the City, uh, Stephen Mangana, were you involved in disco life mm. in the late 1970s? <laughs> may have been, may have been. I'm yeah. not denying or confirming yeah, that. Because I honestly, because occasionally we show pictures of time traveling guests. And uh, I don't know if you've seen this, but we've been sent this. It's a picture, and it's clearly you in, I believe, 1978 in oh a God. Studio 54. There's Stephen Mangan. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Me and Keith Richards there. <laughs> He's a great kisser, let me tell you. <laughs> Throwing some shapes. Look at yes. this. Uh, but no, she was famous, wasn't she? She was. Do you know what? I, th I have seen that picture. I think they ended up getting married, those two. Really? Yeah. Oh, is that lovely? It's sweet, isn't it? That is well, horrible. I hope so after that. Yes, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put a ring on it. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, apparently, in that picture, she's 74 years of age. Wow. wow. Damn. Yeah. Well, Elliot's still moving. Never yeah. too old. Really? Never too old to dance. It does look like me. Which one? <laughs> in a way, both. Yeah. The essence, the essence, the essence of you is, yes. is in of both. Me. It's like the 10 year challenge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, Timothy Chalamet's uh, movie has been earning you rave reviews, congratulations, <laughs> as well as uh, the Golden Globe nomination and a BAFTA nomination. It's called... Be yes, woo! It's uh, <laughs> called Beautiful Boy. It also opens tonight. And now, it's a story of addiction, but it's sort of an addiction we haven't seen before, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what's hopefully new about this film is it's uh, through the prism of a family member, through David Sheff, who's uh, played by Steve Carell. And if we've had first-hand addiction movies, you think of Train Spotting or Christian F, heaven knows what, this is told from the lens of a, of a father and uh, how devastating addiction can be to a family, alcoholism as well. And, uh, and hopefully it's a reflection of what a lot of people are going through right now. But it's a weird... So there's both... The father wrote a memoir mm. and the son. Yes, yeah, so David Chef wrote A Beautiful Boy, which is the, what the movie favours, perspective-wise, and then Nick wrote a memoir called Tweak that's much more present tense. This happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. Mm. And often, I think, the stories about drug addiction, mm. they're, they're based on, you know, some sort of deprivation, or you can mm. see why somebody felt it. But on the face of it, you know, Nick has this charmed life. Yeah, the, this... The why of the addiction in this movie doesn't matter as much as the is. He just is addicted. This isn't about why someone gets addicted. It's not about the stereotype of a moral failing when someone gets addicted. It's about the horror of going through it. Yeah. Someone said it to me, like... And I, I liked how they said it. They said it's one of my favorite horror movies I've seen this year. Yeah. And I like saying that into a, a watching audience as well, because I don't want to like sell it in any false way. It's not like the most uplifting film in the world at all. But I do feel it's important because uh, in England as well, I'm sure, but especially in America where I'm from, you have a lot of people that are going through this right now with opiates and uh, methamphetamine as yeah. well, like in the movie. So not to make this all very serious, but yeah, but, no. But Nick Chef is is still with us, and you you met him. Yeah, he's alive and well. He's eight years sober now, and um, but he was you know he he had thirteen relapses over seven years. But that's Nick right there. Yeah, it's oh, real. Right. It's a real Nick. Yeah. Wow, um, it must be so strange for him to see this played out. In a yeah, film. I can't even imagine what it would be like to have someone play you in a movie. Yeah. So. Uh, Yikes. Yeah. yeah. And, well, look, let's watch a clip. This is uh, you as Nick and your dad, played by the great Steve Carell, uh, trying to, to reconnect. Mm -hmm. How, well, how's Karen and, uh, and the kids? OK. They ask about you. Is there step up next week? And I know they'd love you. Okay, you're uh, guilt tripping me, all right? No, I'm just saying... I feel they... horrible about myself. I know they wanted you to be there, that's all. I'm sorry, Dad. Um, I just need some fucking money, all right? So please just give me and some then fucking what? money. Where does this end? This is, I gotta see this one through. This is kind of working out for me right now. I got five days sober. It doesn't look like it's working it, out, Nick. Oh, it doesn't look like it's working out? So what, no. the therapy, huh? You can come home. No, that we'll wouldn't... Make it work, please, Nick. Please. <laughs> And you're both so great in this movie, you and Steve Carell. And it's it's the same thing that you were you were a proper fan of Steve Carell's be before this. Oh, I'm a big Steve Carell fan, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's the other fan over there. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and did you walk on set and kind of go, I love you, or were you kind of... <laughs> you, know, you know, it's something on Lady Bird I had to deal with Saoirse too, is, like, when you look up to people and admire them and you're kind of a weirdo yourself, like, you just don't want to play your cards. So I was just suspiciously, like, 
this with him. <laughs> um, but I, I, w once we've been talking about it and promoting it, he knows now how, how creepy and obsessed I am. <laughs> That's good. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that you have, you're having so much success uh, and sort of popular success with films that, on the face of it, you you don't think would kind of resonate in the way that they have, like this, or, or Call Me By Your Name. I mean, how surprised were you when that film found this huge audience? No, absolutely, and I, man, that's why I'm so honored to be up here with you, Laura, as well. Like, uh, I, I love movies, I love acting, I love going to movies. I was kind of getting scared when I was younger that maybe it was becoming like opera or something, like an outdated art form or something. Uh, and you see like Saoirse's movies, you see Laura's movies, you see Steven's, like, the, the, you know, these are, these are great. Uh, ho hopefully these are great things and a good way forward. And the, yourself and Army Hammer, when you weren't called by your name, so you, you yeah, there you are, yay! And you, you get this wonderful opportunity, you go off to Italy to make it. Right. But it sounds like the director really threw you in at the, the deep end. <laughs> yes, this is true. So day one, day one, he... he I, oh, I, yeah. I do well, anything. No, we had a rehearsal with Army that, um... You know, we basically had to break the ice, and our army tells the story way better than I do, but uh, we had to do a rehearsal outside, and Luca made it seem very spur of the moment, like we were gonna rehearse any scene. But then when, once we got outside, he like had a very specific page number to turn to. It happened to be the first make out in the movie, or the first kiss. Mm -hmm. So army and I were kind of looking at each other, like, all right, here we go. And like, uh, <laughs> and uh, so Luca said, you know, dive into it, and we started making out. And there was no stop, there was no like cut. So we, we, like, we wait like a minute or two minutes and then we like stopped making out and Luca was gone. It was just a <laughs> So it was a very odd thing. Very good. Hey, let's move on to Steve Mangan's latest work, presenting Portrait Artist of the Year. Uh, it starts on Sky Arts on the 12th of February and on Catch Up on Now TV. So, and I, I love this show. It's a great show. It isn't is it? a great show. But you're the new boy yep. with the great Joan Bakewell, who, are we allowed to say how old she is? I, yeah, yeah, I think she's gone. She's, <laughs> it's so amazing how old she is. So yes. on. Tenable. If I was her, I'd wear a T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Just saying, I am 87. <gasps> Is she 87? I think she's 85, but oh, you know, okay. still. Sars <laughs> <laughs> <Sauce> Joan. <laughs> <laughs> you look 84. Yeah. <laughs> no, but she is an incredible. She is absolutely amazing, and I just—it's a lovely show because it's. It's one of those things you can't watch someone write a book, you can't watch someone compose a symphony, but you can watch people paint, and you get the same experience at home as you do there. Uh, you know, on the, a Bake Off, for example, is a brilliant show, but you can't eat the pastries. Yes. But at home you can see what's happening, and it's incredible how dramatic it is. And you all get someone. to judge as well, because you're just sitting there going, oh, I don't like that. Yeah, oh, yes. everyone at home is throwing things at the TV, I'm sure. <laughs> and I don't know anything about art, I can't draw... Really? Oh, None? I'm, I can't draw a straight line with a ruler, I'm absolutely <laughs> hopeless. But I don't need to, because I've got three judges who do all the stuff. I'm there to ask the silly question, you know, why do you use a brush, and what, <laughs> what's paint? <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I find myself... I have to stop now, because I've picked up a bit of jargon, and I Ooh. find myself in art galleries going, yeah, the uh, internal dynamic's quite reductive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but, but we have to... I mean, I'm allowed to say, I think, that the, this year's Portrait Artist competition, which starts uh, next... The 12th month, of February, I just told you. Well, on Sky yeah. Arts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Listen, Stephen. Uh, the, uh, the final, the sitter for the final, was Laura Linney. <gasps> yeah. Oh! Yeah. Did you enjoy the experience? <laughs> you say that as if you have you have prior knowledge. No, no. Did no. you not enjoy it? I did. I oh, liked okay. it a lot. Oh, oh no, no, no. I loved it. I, rem I remember one of the painters the, saying about you, she's got a great face, great structure. There's <laughs> no. so much there to get hold of, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a bit of an introvert, really, by nature, so I, I like to sit and be quiet. How long do you have to sit there for? It's not this four hours. Four and a half hours. You, half you were a very good sitter. But it was, you know, and then you get to watch. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks, You really. know, but then you get to sit and you get to watch. Well, I'll tell you, we've got a clip. This is the painting being revealed uh, to uh, the celebrity sitter in, in this episode. Here we go. Ashley, I think it's time. Artists, please turn your easels. Whoa. Wow. So you were actually doing some work. Yeah, that's cool. It does make me look quite regal. Prince Ashley. King, King. King, sorry, King excuse me. <laughs> King Ashley. Yes. Let's go and look at the next one, <laughs> Your Highness. Uh, <laughs> is, 
as a presenter, is that a difficult moment? Because you're thinking, oh, God. It's not difficult for me. <laughs> I mean, I've seen all the paintings. And sometimes you get three amazing ones. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work. Even the best artists, they, they're so nervous and on the day. And you, you watch the sitter, because you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings <laughs> as a sitter. And you watch the paintings turn around and the sitters go, oh, 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 it's great. <laughs> Because sometimes they're not that flattering, or you don't look. And they have such. I mean, look. four hours is not a lot of time. It's not a to lot of time. To do a portrait, I mean, it's it's a Wouldn't nothing. Like yours? Yeah, very much. Is it? Where is very it much. now? Because you've got to. It's at home. It's at home. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you got to choose. You got to you got choose to the one you like the best. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's good. Where are you going to put that? Hmm? It's it's in a room. Okay. Yeah, it's hanging and everything. <laughs> okay. It's there. And you were. Oh yeah, I, the yeah. prize one year. Wasn't yes, it? a couple of years oh, ago. Yeah. A couple of years ago. Yeah. And, and uh, your painting's hanging in the National Gallery of Ireland, isn't that right? The National Gallery of Ireland, wow. yes. It took down a Vermeer wow. to put up you, didn't it? <laughs> 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 no, and I did. It's very I, impressive. I, well, I had to go... I went to see it when last time I was in Dublin. Yeah. But, of course, I, but I couldn't ask anyone where it was, <laughs> so I had to just wander around the gallery, <laughs> and I'm going, that it? <laughs> and finally I see it, I go, oh, there it is, and I'm going out, I think I got away with that, and I was just leaving the building, and the woman around reception going, having a look at yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes, I won't get away with anything. <laughs> it's a great painting. It no, it's beautiful. Is. Absolutely beautiful. 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 But uh, talking of competitions, uh, Stephen Mangan, you entered a competition. In fact, you won a competition, and it sounds like an incredibly difficult competition. Uh, again, as a kid. Yes. I wonder if I went dressed as Beauty. I don't think. <laughs> I did. Uh, guessing the number of uh, jelly beans in a mini, in a mini, in a mini Cooper. Like, that's hard! How did you do that? It's just a gift I have. <laughs> uh, yeah. What was the number? I, I can't remember now, but I remember it was the prize was presented by Britain's tallest man. <laughs> but, well, that's all I remember is that, thank you. <laughs> but did you win the car? No, no, I won some vouchers. <laughs> I know. Jelly beans. Yeah, I mean, I would have taken yeah, the yeah. car or all the jelly beans. <laughs> yeah. <but> no. <laughs> vouchers. Because, Sir Sharonan, you also... You won a really good prize. Yeah. What did you win? I won a trip to Florida when I was a kid. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. It's so true. Yeah, it's like, yeah. No, that's good. Um, tell, us, tell us how you won it. I Well, I won it when I, was a, when I was a kid and I had never entered into a competition like that before. And it was the first day of the summer holidays when I was, I was like, nine or ten or something. And Jerry Ryan, who you know, was this very well-known Irish DJ at home. He's passed away now, but he was, he was really incredible. And his show was, like, the top show in the country. And Shrek 2 had just come out. That's how long ago it was. And he was giving away this holiday to Florida. And what you had to do was you had to phone in as one of the characters in Shrek 2 and tell Jerry why you deserved the holiday. And I hadn't started properly acting yet at that stage or anything. But Dad was an actor, so I was around sort of like, you know, improvisers and things like that. And and Mum was like, you should go in for it, just why not? We had never been on like a proper holiday. I was like, oh God, okay. So we got a little notepad, like tiny little notepad, and we wrote down like a tiny little script of what I was gonna say, just this short little script. And I got on, and I think I was one of the first kids on, and I and I did it as the gingerbread man. And and so then five days later he he phoned up and told me that we had won. Well, you were on the Late Late back in Ireland a couple of weeks yeah. ago, and they, they found this clip. So this is, uh, this is two little clips put together. This is, it, it's your gingerbread man, yeah. uh, followed by, which I really like, your reaction to winning. Yeah. So here's Very the, squeaky uh, voice. <laughs> here we go, here we go. Now, Saoirse is 10 years of age. Yeah. Now, which character have you chosen? Um, I'm going to do the gingerbread man. Off you go, Saoirse. <laughs> Are you? Um, yeah. Well, I've got news for you. Yeah. You're going to Florida. When you win an Oscar, I want you to react like that. Oh, my God, oh my God. <laughs> I also got a blow-up donkey halfway through the week, so that's what I was like, oh, I'm out of it then, if they've sent me a blow-up donkey. <laughs> I had this, like, this this donkey that went up to it, and I brought him into school and everything. I was like, I haven't won the prize, but at least I got this. Yes. Um, but, yeah. Uh, but now, here's it. Laura Linney. Sir. You 
<laughs> and now, because, you know, people enter competitions and they win them. Mm -hmm. Whatever competition I thought you might have entered <laughs> and won, it was not, <laughs> not this. this one. Uh, mm -hmm. So tell us what mm -hmm. you what you entered. I have deep hidden talent. Yes. Yes. I won a limbo competition <gasps> on roller skates. You are kidding. Uh, roller skate what? limbo competition when I was like 12 or 13 years old. Wow. Yeah. I thought so I thought I knew what that was. I thought you just did the limbo. But is it the it's you do that? Well, I didn't do that. Oh. I, d I didn't do that. I went I went this way and I went I went backwards and I had a very short boyfriend at the time. So we did it as a couple. <laughs> so that helped. <laughs> what did you win? I don't remember. I think like a, a solo dance around the rink. Oh, I think the two really? of us got to like dance to some like, you know. Saturday Night Live sort of disco yeah. kind of. I like Laura. The whole dance. the whole narrative of the show is I'm a very shy person, really. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then my prize after winning a Woo! Rolex in limbo. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had winner, winner, winner. Now, uh, Timothy, you didn't you you didn't win. You didn't win. If it, if it was as a competition, I'm talking about your effort to do well in. Was it an exam about statistics? Oh God, <laughs> Christ! Yes, this is true. I I, I got a D on that. Yeah. You got a D. I got a D, but but but, I mean, I I, I deserve that or or worse. But anyway, so so you're in school. You're doing an exam of statistics. Your teacher, she's Miss Lawton. Yes, Lawton. Uh, Lawton, Lawton, <laughs> Miss Lawton. Uh -huh. And so, what were the other kids doing? Were the other kids just doing? Ah, uh, yeah, variation. I mean, I mean. Some people presented parabolas and things that were uh, more appropriate for statistics, uh, you know, varied projects. My, mine was not. So tell the people what you decided to do. Like a statistics song? Yes, a sort, yeah. of, a sort of statistics ramp. Yeah, horrible, bad, bad level, <laughs> worst level, yeah. yes. But no, but you came up with a whole rap persona, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but not for that, I just had it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so Lil, is it Lil Timmy Tim? Yeah, it's part of my... Uh, <laughs> So, oh, you're gonna this. regret. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Gingerbread so man is nothing I mean, now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> now it's yeah. on the internet. Uh, well, no, it's out. But, uh, so, how do we have this film? Did you post it? How, do, how does this film exist? So I posted it. I did it with a friend on a green screen in school, and I'm pointing to different. I was gonna Photoshop my teacher's face in, but I got too lazy. So now they're just kind of weird in the video. I'm pointing around, and there's. There's nothing. Uh, <laughs> well, here are the statistical <laughs> rap stylings of Lil Timmy Tim. Yep, statistic, yep, yep, statistic, yep, statistic, yep, 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 yep,
like a family wedding. Here we are. Uh, so, uh, welcome. Thank you so much, boys. That was fantastic. Oh, thank and you so much. Thank you. That is Orf, uh, your album, A Brief Inquiry into Online Relationships. That's right. Yeah. That is it. Uh, so, th this has been out for a while. I mean, it's... It, it, yeah, it came out... When did it come out? End of November. End of November. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> number one. <laughs> but no, but number one. Number one, in yeah. this country, at least. Yeah. It's good. It was really... <laughs> it didn't mean like that. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's a weird thing to say. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. Sorry. Stupid rest of world. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, it's a really weird thing to say. Sorry. <laughs> and now you're this year. You're headlining uh, Leeds and Reading. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nominated for uh, two Brit Awards. Yeah. Yes. And are we allowed to say that you're performing at the Brit Awards? You did it. You are. <laughs> you're, you're performing at the Brit Awards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are playing. Uh, scary. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now uh, I have to say, who, which of you is uh, the big Saoirse Ronan fan? Who enjoyed Lovely Bones? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, I love no. that story. That's Adam. Sorry, no, it's, it's, it's mainly... Adam came into rehearsal <laughs> ages ago once and he said to me, he was like, you seen that Lovely Bones film? I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. He was like, it's mad, isn't it? <laughs> I was like, it's great, it's good. He was like, no, it's like, <laughs> was like, it's like mad. It's like, she's dead and then she's alive and then, like, there's the credits and then there's some other people. And <laughs> I watched the whole thing, it was completely mad and I was quite confused because I'd seen it, I just thought it was really good. Right. And then um, he, the he came in the next day and he was like, yeah, my DVD player's on shuffle. <laughs> 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 and he'd done the whole, the whole oh film. Like this, I even thought it was like some avant-garde <laughs> piece of... <laughs> DVD player. I don't know. <laughs> How long ago is this as well that it was on a DVD uh, player? Why would you need that? I don't know. Yeah, well, no have you seen it in order yet? I've not. No. <laughs> you didn't want to spoil it. You didn't want to spoil it. Like some proper deep hipster recommendation, that one, so. <laughs> well, listen, thank you so much for that performance. And 1975, everybody! <laughs> It's time, uh, before we go, just time for a visit to the big red chair. Uh, who is there? Hello! Hi. Hi. What's your name? <laughs> Earl. Earl. Lovely Earl. And where are you from? Uh, originally from the United States, but I live here. OK, what do you do? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pilot. Hmm? I'm a pilot. Uh, of planes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> OK, Earl, off you go with your story. Uh, it was Christmas time, and I was off to see my mom, who lived in Florida at the time. And I was running late, as I usually do. And I got to the airport, was trying to get through security. One person to go between me and getting to my plane. And he was taking forever, really slow. And putting the trays in front of him. He's looking around, or he's not looking around. He's just standing there. People are helping him out. And I thought to myself, come on, man. What, are you blind? And I finally looked up. It was Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. 
I wasn't expecting Stevie Wonder at the end of that story. I was expecting a blind man, but yeah, not yeah. Stevie Wonder. The celebrity <laughs> switch. It was good. Uh, right, should we have another one? Here we go. Hello. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Liz. Liz, lovely. And where are you from, Liz? Uh, originally Glasgow, but now Surrey. Oh, Surrey? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure whether it's Glasgow or Surrey are getting the cheers. All right, uh, Liz, off you go with your story. Well, I used to be quite an active member of the church many years ago, and we were told one day that the bishop was coming to say Mass, and the priest said, anyone who wants a blessing, you can all line up outside of the church afterwards, and you will receive a blessing from the bishop. So he said, if you have any rosaries or Bibles or any sort of religious trinkets you want um, blessed, just hold them up. So we all stood outside the church, all lined, waiting for the bishop to come along, and I could see him moving along the line, and there was an elderly lady next to me, and she was fumbling in her bag, and the bishop was getting closer, and she was fumbling and fumbling, and then just as the bishop got to her, she pulled out her rosary, and there was a sanitary towel dangling from it. <laughs> and he just blessed them both and moved on swiftly. <laughs> Time for. Uh, if you'd like to have a go in the red chair, you can and tell your story. Just contact us via our website at this very address. Uh, please say a huge thank you to all of my guests. The 1975, everyone. <laughs> Stephen Mangan. <laughs> Laura Linney. <laughs> Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> and Sasha Ronan. <laughs> and join me next week with step star Claire Richards. Uh, actor Naomi Rapess, funny man Greg Davies, heavyweight champ Anthony Joshua, and acting royalty Sir Kenneth Branagh and Dame Judi Dench. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. Dancers of all ages from all over the country are getting ready for the biggest audition of their lives. The search continues for Britain's greatest dancer tomorrow night on BBC One and watch the series so far on BBC iPlayer.